Have you ever wondered how you can sometimes conquer your own fears? And even if you don't, you tend to forget these unpleasant memories. Well, both of these things are controlled by your brain's cannabis. That's right, your brain makes its own cannabis. It's not as simple as this, but your brain makes chemicals called endocannabinoids. And in structure, these are remarkably similar to the active chemicals found in the cannabis plant. These chemicals go on to act at receptors or targets in your body. The fact that there's a plant out there able to make similar chemicals capable of binding to these targets is purely coincidence. So you're probably wondering, why do we have these cannabis-like chemicals in us? Well, they do essentially the same thing as cannabis, but they do it in a much more controlled way. They work like changing gears in a manual car. It's gradual. External cannabis is more like slamming on the brakes in your brain, and this causes more harmful effects, like psychosis. The brain's cannabis-like chemicals and the targets they act at make up your endocannabinoid system. Put simply, this system helps you eat, sleep, relax, forget and protect. And these are completely normal effects of the human body to maintain homeostasis or keep balance. Now the main targets for endocannabinoids is the CB1 receptor. And when these chemicals come into contact with CB1, the cells in your brain send out messengers that tell you how to respond to pain, form a memory and feel happy or even sad. My PhD thesis looks at how the CB1 receptor sends out these signals and what other proteins or modulators influence the signals being sent out. And so far I've found that reducing one of these modulators can amplify the effects of your brain's cannabis-like chemicals and more importantly that it has no effect on external cannabis compounds. It's exciting to know that your brain makes its own drugs and not the illicit kind. We can use this system, target it, and design drugs that either increase or decrease endocannabinoid levels, or even drugs that target these modulators. Then we can fine tune the effects of this system. It would be like switching over from a manual to an automatic. And if we can do this, it would have therapeutic benefits in a number of conditions where endocannabinoid levels are altered or off balance, like in schizophrenia, depression, and in anxiety-like disorders. And I think that's something definitely worth pursuing. Thank you.